Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is introduce you to these identities here, often called the compound angle formulae or addition formulae. And what they do is they give us rules for adding or subtracting two angles from one another and finding out the sine, cosine or tangent. And what I want to do is to show you how they work, just verify that they do actually work. I'm not going to prove why they are what they are, okay? Also, it's worth mentioning that when you learn these, you only really need to learn one of them for each of the sine, the cosine and the tangent, because they have the same structure. You'll notice the sine of a plus b is identical to sine a cos b, plus sine b cos a. But when it comes to down to the sine of a minus b, we've got the same pattern as up here, only the sine changes. We use the same sine here as we have here. When it comes to the cosine ones, for cosine of a plus b and cosine of a minus b, we have a different pattern structure to what we had up here. Cos of a plus b is cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. But when it comes to this one, notice we've got the same pattern structure here and here. It's only the signs that change. When we've got a plus here, we have a minus in the middle. And when we have a minus, we have a plus. So you only need to learn one of these, but just remember the rule about the signs. And the same applies to the tangent ones. The tan of a plus b is tan of a plus tan b, all over 1 minus tan a times tan b. Same again, really, when it comes to the tan of a minus b, but it's only the signs that change. Notice on the top here, we have the same sign that's in the bracket here, with this one, minus, minus, but on the bottom of the fraction, the sign switches. Okay? So, let's have a look at using or verifying how these work. So, for instance, suppose we had the sine of, say, 50 degrees to work out. That is, say, 30 degrees plus 20 degrees. It's very common to think that this should be the sine of 30 degrees plus the sine of 20 degrees, expanding it as if this were a number. If you were to check this out, this is the sine of 50 degrees. Let's just put it down here, the sine of 50 degrees. If you get on your calculator, you'll see that the sine of 50 degrees is 0 0.766 0 and so on. But if you were to work this one out, just do the sine of 30 plus the sine of 20 degrees, you would find that you would get 0 0.8420 and so on. So clearly this is not equal to this. This is a very common mistake. So this is totally wrong. It doesn't equal that at all. Okay? So, let's show you that we can get this answer by using this identity up here. So, if we're looking at the sine of 30 degrees plus 20 degrees, the sine of 50 degrees then, what we can do is compare this to this by saying this is the A and the 20 degrees is the B. So, we have sine A times cos B. Sine of A, A being the 30 degrees here, so it'd be sine 30 degrees times cosine of b, cosine of 20 degrees. Then according to the formula, we have plus sine b cos a. So that'd be plus the sine of b, b being the 20 degrees, times the cosine of a, a being the 30 degrees. So times cosine of 30 degrees. And if you get on the calculator for this, just do the sine of 30 times cos 20, plus sine 20 times cos 30, and you'll find you will get 0 0.7660 and so on. So that would verify that this identity here works. And what I'd encourage you to do is just experiment, don't have to do them all, but just experiment with, say, another one. 
For instance, suppose you let A be, let's say, 40 degrees and B the angle, say, 10 degrees. You could do the tan of A plus B, tan of 50 degrees once more, say. Tan of 40 degrees plus 10 degrees, according to the identity, will be tan A plus tan B, so that would be tan 40 degrees plus tan 10 degrees, all divided by 1 minus tan A tan B, tan 40 degrees times tan 10 degrees. Now this is the tan of 50 degrees, and this is another version for the tan of 50 degrees. Use your calculator, check that you get both the same result when you do the tan of 50 and this formula here. They should both come to 1.1917 and so on. Now in later tutorials I'll show you how we can use these to prove other identities and also find out exact values of particular angles for sine, cos and tan without even using a calculator. And so I hope you'll have a look at those and that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.